Welcome to Professor Game Podcast, where we interview successful practitioners of games, gamification, and game thinking, who bring us the best of their experiences to get ideas, insights, and inspiration that help us in the process of getting the students to learn what we teach. And I'm Rob Alvarez. I teach and work at IE Business School in Madrid, where we create interactive and engaging learning materials. Want to know more? Go to professorgame.com slash subscribe, start on our email list, and ask me anything. Hello, Engagers. So today we have a special episode. It's quite different from before. You'll notice it in the sound because it was taken during a trip I made to Amsterdam where I stayed at the Arcade Hotel where I had the chance to chat with the owner of the Arcade Hotel. It's a hotel. It's sort of the video game or the geek hotel. It's it's a very, very incredible experience and I wanted to share it with you. And that's why I'm taking these this few seconds before the interview, just to, to give you a heads up that the sound will be, you know, it will sound a bit different as than the usual episodes, but the content is amazing and I hope it inspires you and that you get a lot out of it. So I just leave you to that. There you'll have Daniel Salmanovich, who is the owner of the Arcade Hotel. Yeah, so uh, my name is Dan Salmanovich. I'm the founder and director of the Arcade Hotel. Born and raised in Montreal. Uh, I spent most of my life in the service industry. Uh, dad and some friends of his got into hotels in Amsterdam. I had just gotten fired from an event planning company. <laughs> so I was looking for the next best thing. And I moved to Amsterdam in 2005 or six, uh, and started working in the hotels. Uh, did housekeeping, did the breakfast, did the accounting, the front office, uh, the marketing. So I did a little bit of everything. Did a summer program at the hotel school in The Hague. And then over the years, just learned the business from the inside out. And then a few years ago, I was living in Berlin. We had a hotel there. Uh, I was, we were in the process of selling it. I was moving back to Amsterdam. And I didn't want the hotel in Amsterdam just to be another booking.com hotel. I'm going to pause you right there yes. because that's part of what we're going to talk uh, about in okay, this interview. Okay. So, so yeah, that's how I got to Amsterdam. <laughs> <laughs> that's who, who Dan is and where, where you might feel the sound is a bit different than usual because we're here sitting inside the game room of the arcade hotel so yes pow pow <laughs> <laughs> there's going to be some probably some cool pictures in the if you go to professorgame.com and look for dan you're going to find the the, the show notes we're going to see some of the cool stuff that we can see around here and i completely I'm, I'm staying here i'm in amsterdam right now and i'm staying at the hotel for the second time because i was amazed at the first time you probably heard of it when I was in gamification Europe because I spent some time talking about it as well and I'm very very happy to be here with you today Dan thanks so, for coming no to my pleasure definitely so uh the first thing I wanted to know you, you were going to get into the hotel but before that I would like to know like the usual day of Dan here at the, the arcade hotel what does it look like because we we listen to the the manager of the arcade hotel which is the video game and you know the the geek hotel if, if if you ask me yeah and it sounds pretty cool so what is it what does it look like what does it feel like to be dan in a day like this one um well unfortunately unfortunately i'm no longer the gm here okay i have hot there's, there's a guy named steve who's our gm i oversee the hotel more on marketing branding partnerships sponsorships i don't really handle the day-to-day -day so much anymore but it still does involve going online and buying a <laughs> two foot high Terminator, you know, exoskeleton hands and looking for a lot of, you know, 48 Dreamcast games and then negotiating the price with somebody or buying a collection of comic books. I still get to do the geek stuff of the, of the arcade hotel, but not necessarily the, the day to day running of the hotel. Because at the moment, I do focus on expansion. Uh, we are looking to move into other cities. So I've been spending a lot of time looking for investors, um, dealing with the finances. So it's not as, you know, it's not as, uh, <laughs> it's, it's not as luxurious as it sounds. Um, <laughs> but I mean, yeah, the, the whole thing. sound like you're like doing some of the things you want to do and some of the yes. things you have to do as well. Yeah, exactly. And I think even the things that I have to do, I want to do. I mean, it's, it's you know, it's not easy trying to find investors and um, because, I mean, I want to take this to 40 cities in 10 years. Wow. That's the idea. 
making that a reality is a lot harder to, to get that off the ground. Uh, so, yeah, I do have a combination. So my day-to-day is really, I'm on the, lab so, uh, the my, my laptop, I'm grinding, looking for people, sending out a billion emails, then hunting for geek culture bargains. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, yeah, dealing with our partners because we do have sponsors for the hotel as well. Partners, we work with NVIDIA and Sennheiser, Yama, um, Noble Chairs, EA, Ajax Amsterdam, which is the football team, but we, we, you know, we're sponsored, we're partnered up with their esports team, uh, as well as the E Air Divisie, which is the esports league. Yeah, things like that. So uh, I enjoy finding other companies who want to work with us and figuring out how we can work together. That sounds very, very, very cool, <laughs> I have to say. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, sometimes. So... Within that, that you, you were talking before about how you arrived to this idea. Can you give us you know, a, a peek into, into how this came through? Is there anything similar around that you saw that you said, oh, this sounds like a cool concept I want to I wanna use? Or how did it come to your mind to create something like the Arcade Hotel? I think, I think it was just you know, uh, a good timing. So I was in the process of moving back to Amsterdam. We were selling the hotel in Berlin which was nothing like this. I mean, it was a business hotel in, in, in uh, West Berlin. And I knew that I wanted to come back here. We were in the process of buying the built, well, the, the ground floor and the first floor of the building next door. So we would be expanding the hotel uh, with nine new rooms. So I wanted to try something with nine new rooms. We were, you know, it was going to look brand new. So we might as well try something at the same time. So I didn't want it to be just, you know, we were at the time a booking.com hotel. So I think it was like 98%, 99% of our reservations came through Booking.com or Expedia, which I didn't want anymore. It costs us money. We have to pay commissions on it. Uh, this is for everybody booking a hotel in the near future or in the future. Always book with the hotel direct. Always, 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 always. <laughs> so we started, we bought, we bought the first two floors and then we started design. So, okay, let me backtrack. I was in Berlin. I had a bottle of Jameson with me. I was gaming. During those few weeks, I had been trying to come up with an idea of what to do with this place. So one night after a few drinks while gaming, <laughs> I had a light bulb moment. And I was like, fuck it. Why don't I put video games in there? Why don't I put comic books in there? Why don't I make it? Why don't I just take my childhood and vomit it on the hotel? And essentially, that's what I did. I still had, you know, action figures from when I was a kid. I had my full comic book collection. Uh, I had some gaming stuff. So I came back to Amsterdam. I started working with a PR firm. We put out that we're going to be opening up a video game hotel. And then it just kind of blew up from there. We did a launch. There's a hotel night, which is very similar to a museum night. Okay. So one night, you know, 40 hotels around Amsterdam open up their doors to the public. They show off what they have. We did that with our nine new rooms, only our nine rooms. We we launched the Arcade Hotel. Uh, and then, yeah, and then it just kind of took off and we became the world's first video game hotel. So uh, when I had moved back here and I had the idea and we were still building the rooms and I had started researching, I found that there was one hotel in London that had one room with four TVs. So they had a PlayStation, an Xbox, a Nintendo, and a PC, and that was it. That was the closest thing I found to a video game hotel. Wow. And that was it. <laughs> so the research paid off. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just finding out that nobody else was doing it, I mean, really, really, really helped. So it was, it was a good feeling knowing that nobody else had done it. And as far as I've, uh, I've seen, like, when, I, when, I, when I've looked for rooms the two times, for whatever reason, I've gone in once or twice, it seems like you have fully booked, usually. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, you know, I can't really. I would love to say it's because it's the video games, but Amsterdam is is a really well to do city. So I mean, as far as tourism is concerned, so it's always full. Yes, I think that you know the video games do help, but in general, I mean, this is a very busy city. So I'm I'm lucky in that sense. Uh, but so those forty cities are probably going to be busy cities as well. Yeah, all, all busy cities. I mean, it, it has to be uh, first and foremost on a hotel. Yeah. So I have to ensure that, you know, our business runs well. And the video games is just, you know, it's an add-on. It's, it's, uh, it's an experience. It's not, it's not the hotel itself, but it's the experience within the hotel. Fantastic. So you were, you were talking about some of the features, and I've, and I've seen many of them. 
I've seen the, you mentioned that there's uh, consoles in, in many places. Yes. There's this game room where we're at. I'm looking at, what, six PCs? Yep. Um, three or four consoles, yeah. looking at two gigantic five TVs. Yeah, five consoles. Five consoles, actually. Yeah, yeah. that's the Switch. I didn't see it. And there's some VR headsets over there, which yeah. I'm guessing have fantastic games as well. Yep. Looks very cool. What are like the features? If you, if I said like, what's the feature set of, <laughs> of the arcade yeah. hotel? What do we have here? So in every room you have a retro console and an Nvidia Shield. So uh, the Nvidia Shield is a great, yeah, multi-purpose entertain like a home entertainment uh, uh, console. It's uh, streaming in the cloud. Uh, we have a GeForce Now membership on every single Nvidia Shield, so you will have uh, quite a few titles that are already locked and loaded. So the NVIDIA Shield, uh, then the retro console. In the reception right behind you, we have our video game library where every guest can come down and take two games at a time, free of charge, obviously, and game in the room. And we have everything in the rooms from, let's say, the original Atari, so 1977, up until uh, the original Xbox, which is 2001. So you never know what you're going to get. Some people like to request. You know, oh, I want a you know, Super Nintendo, or I want an N64 or whatever. Uh, we try to do our best, but sometimes it's just you're going to get what you're going to get. Uh, so th that's as far as the gaming in the room. Uh, down in the lobby, we have a retro corner. So we got four old CRTVs uh, with a bunch of different consoles over there. We have a tabletop gaming, which is 450 games in there. 450? Uh, yeah, the table over there. I mean, you've seen it. Uh, it's got 450 games loaded inside. We have a, a comic book library, which you can come down and uh, take up to your room. Uh, as you mentioned, we have the game room, which is our pièce de résistance, our uh, gym, you know, our spa, where, um, well, you listeners at home, I did the open air quotes for spa and gym. Uh, and as you said, I mean, this is kind of the high end everything. We're working with the top of the line um, MSI computers with GeForce graphic card. All the consoles, yeah, PS3, PS4, Xbox 360, Xbox, I want to say S or X or, because <laughs> uh, I told you before, I'm not much of an Xbox guy. Uh, yeah, the Nintendo Switch, two, uh, what is this, 65-inch TVs, an MSI backpack for the VR. So, I mean, this is, yeah, this is the PS de Resistance that, you know, you won't find in your room, but this is just the high-end everything, and you get the, the full experience. Uh, what else can, we have a bar, we have a 24-hour bar. So if you're up late, you can pick up some snacks, uh, some uh, noodle soup, some pizzas. We have uh, you know, some cocktails that we also like to do. Um, myself being Canadian, uh, my pride and joy is the Bloody Caesar. <laughs> not sure if you're familiar with it. It's <laughs> not really, but it, just looking at your face, it seems like it's <laughs> quite a pride. <laughs> I'm already drooling. Like It's only 9.15 in the morning and I'm already drooling. Um, <laughs> So we have the Bloody Caesar, yeah, and uh, we do bike rentals, you know, and one thing that I'm very proud of about this place is our staff. Uh, they are some of the most helpful people you're going to find in Amsterdam, very knowledgeable, and uh, yeah, they know their gaming as well, so if you want to talk about, say, gaming, these are, this is the place to come. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic, so that's a, quite a feature set, as you, can, as you might have realized from... From Dan, I've enjoyed many of them. I'm not going to say all, especially on the on the PC side. I'm not an expert in PC gaming. <laughs> Actually, the first time I came here, I knew I was waiting for my room and I had to stay around here. So I spent a while and I, and I tried to, to do something on the PC, but I don't have like an account on Steam. I it didn't have any of those things. So it was like, you know, you got to just stop trying. <laughs> there was like a, a tournament here. So most of the consoles were outside, which is my, my area of expertise. Yeah. So I just charged my phone for a while. <laughs> <laughs> but no, this is a, a fantastic place. The feature set is absolutely amazing. If you're anything of a, con of a PC gamer as well, you'll see you have, as, as Dan mentioned, some you know, top of the notch uh, PCs over here to play as much as you want to. Yeah. Yeah. So... Now that we know how it starts, now that we know some of the feature sets here at the, the Arcade Hotel, what would you say is, like, I don't know, what's the, the way in which this hotel views itself outside? Because you mentioned that you're not just, uh, I mean, you are a hotel and that's the main core of your business. And of course, you have to have a business. Otherwise, it would be sad to see this hotel close. Um, but when you go outside and, and people come here, is it really mostly P 
people who are interested in the gaming thing or is it a mix like what does it look like for for you from that standpoint so clearly this is a gaming hotel but i don't like to pigeonhole myself just by saying it's a gaming hotel i mean we are this, this place is for geeks by geeks so it's yeah gaming is the at the forefront of this but you know we also have uh the comic book library and you know all this kind of decor that fits around this you know, sci-fi, comic books, superheroes, gaming, geek culture. Oh, and I saw board games, by the way. Yeah, of well. course. I mean, it, it should encompass everything gaming. We, we look at gaming as kind of the social uh, glue. I mean, I want people to come here and leave with new Facebook friends or Instagram friends or have new emails, you know, and, and meet new people from all over. And gaming is a huge facilitator of, you know, social interaction. So you have that. But the, the people that come here, you know, over the first... We opened in 2016, and now we're in 2019, so uh, a little over three years. We we went from being this kind of 90%, we call them civilians, <laughs> so the people who are not necessarily into this, and they are the Booking.com bookers or the Expedia bookers, uh, and they just, you know, they need a hotel in Amsterdam, and they found a good price, or we have a good review, so they decided to come here, and then they realized it's a video game hotel, but I would say now we're at... 50% game or 50% civilian. So the <laughs> civilian, people, I love civilian, the word. Exactly. I mean, it's just, yeah, it's, it's my, my general manager, Steve, is not a gamer. So he... You have I a think, civilian as a general manager. Wow. So exactly. I mean, he's a hotel guy. Uh, he was actually my mentor when I started in this business 15 years ago. But so he kind of coined it as civilians, people who are non-gamers. Uh, so I think we're at about 50-50, and I think we're actually, I think we've tipped the scales. I think we're more gamers now than, than non-gamers. Uh, we see it in the amount of people who use the game room where we're sitting. But at the end of the day, the statistics are that one in three people on the planet are gamers in some form or another, whether it be mobile or console or PC or whatever. Uh, one in three people on the planet are gamers. We do enjoy seeing, you know, a dad sitting here who's got to be, he's in his late 30s or the 40s, sitting here with his, you know, 5 to 10-year-old child on an old Nintendo in the lobby, being like, this is how you play Duck Hunt. This is how, this is what I played when I was growing up. And <laughs> then he's, you know, then he moves over to the Super Nintendo and he's like, you know, this is, this is you know, Donkey Kong Country. And then, so it's, we, we now have a mix of, of people. Uh, we have a lot of gamer couples. We have a lot of these families that are coming here that probably want to just like shove their kids in front of some consoles and then mom and dad can sit at the bar and have a beer and not be disturbed. But yeah, so, so, so we're definitely seeing more gamers coming in, even if they used to be gamers. You could tell, you could tell. Like you'll see the dad just grab a, a Nintendo game, give it a good blow, <laughs> and then shove it in three times and then blow it again, shove it in, and then it works. You know, like he knows what he's doing. But you won't see him kind of coming into the game room and picking up a PS4 remote or a PS3 remote. So, yeah, uh, we definitely do have a 30, let's say 30 plus clientele. We started off with the retro thing. So we have people who are, and, you know, I think that's what draws some of these people who don't game anymore but used to game on the retro stuff. And that's kind of also why they're coming. It's a calling as well. Yeah. I've seen yeah. I've seen that on the newsletter because I, I signed up a while ago and, I, and I've seen you have you also hold events here in general. What are like the other things that you do? Again, your main business is is being a hotel. What are other things that happen in in the arcade hotel? Our longest running event is a monthly FIFA tournament, uh, and this is you know this this is what we we we, were, we do work with EA on this as well. Uh, we work with um, IX Amsterdam, that well, the esports team with, uh, with them as well. So FIFA is our longest running. Every month we have about 32 people coming here on a Saturday, um, and we do a nice tournament. There's a 10 euro cover charge, uh, but the money is it goes to the prize money. So we have that. Uh, we started. I think we're going to have our fourth edition called the Arcade Talks, whereby we bring people from the industry, either from the gaming industry or kind of from the geek. Geekdom, the geek kingdom, uh, <laughs> discussing different things. So, you know, our first arcade talks was how um, fans can influence the, the games or the, the gaming franchise. was done by actually our event planner who's been studying this and wrote his thesis on it. It is extremely interesting. Uh, the Another one we had was uh, gamification, 
and uh, how gaming can help you in your professional career. Um, what was it? By cu- out of curiosity? I, f- I forgot the name. I actually have her book sitting on my desk. I, I forgot the name. I will get it to you after, and sure. I would love if you even plug her because it's very interesting as I'll well. I'll put her, her it was her in yeah. the show notes. Melinda yeah. Jacobs, by any chance? Is she Dutch? She lived in Amsterdam until recently. Yeah, I have to. She's I have American, to but she lived here. I think it, it could very well possibly be. She's a past guest, so. And her birthday was today or yesterday or something. Happy birthday, Melinda. <laughs> <laughs> She moved to Berlin, so she has something in common with you. Okay. American living in Amsterdam, moving back and forth from Berlin. So. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Mm. Is she cute? Um, so, uh, yeah, we have the next one uh, coming up soon. So, we, we, we like to hold these these talks about the industry. Uh, we had two, two actually Dutch guys who worked on the original Star Wars film, so they came in to talk about that as well. Uh, one of them had written a book about his experiences working on, on, on the Star Wars movies. So that happens also once a month. Um, we do, yeah. We, at the end of the day, I'd like to be a community center as well. Is it like directed towards uh, d- local people, Dutch people? Is it more international for your guests? Uh, it is. Like- it is obviously for our guests. We do. We, we do inform them that we do have these. But no, at the end of the day, this is also for the locals. I do want to be a driving force in the in let's say the neighborhood of the community of Amsterdam uh, for promoting gaming. First of all, responsibly. Uh, second of all, if we could influence, I mean, if I would have known how to become, you know, a games director or, you know, a program or, or art director uh, at the age of 12 or even younger, I definitely think my life would have been different than it is today uh, because I, you know, I started gaming when I was five. I had a ColecoVision or when I was four. I had a ColecoVision and Atari and, and that's where I If I would have known how that world was working so i may have tried to get into it a lot more because i did want to be in it when i was younger <laughs> but i knew nothing about it and so if we could somehow influence younger generations today and give them you know help them kind of find their way yeah I, i'd be very happy about that so i do want to be um yeah a, a bit of a center for in you know information and um promotion of the video game industry uh, we work, uh, I have a games, let's say, director, and he's also, I work with him on the sponsorships and partnerships and everything, and he also gives a, a talk to parents in high schools and in elementary schools uh, about uh, gaming responsibly. So he also coaches younger people who happen to be doing very well in a specific game, not just coaching strategy on the game, but how to make sure that they eat well, that they still study, that they still get the exercise that they need. So we, we also want to, you know, help parents understand this energy. So we, you know, every once in a while he comes here and we also have one of the talks for parents to come here and learn about uh, gaming responsibly. Other events, we're going to be starting a fight night soon, a race night soon. We just celebrated Canada Day here on uh, this past Saturday. Does it have anything to do with the fact that you're Canadian? Of course. <laughs> We had poutines. I'm not sure if you're familiar with poutines. No, I've, n- I've never been to Canada, actually. So it's French fries, gravy, and cheese all toppled onto each other, and it's just like <laughs> a heart attack in a bowl. So, yeah, we had that. We had the Bloody Caesar. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, so just a big celebration. We do Halloween. We celebrated it. We had a, a little bit of a memorial for Stanley when he passed away. So we like to celebrate small things. Uh, but yeah, on, on the regular, at least once a week, we'll have a board game night, different different things like that, so small competitions, uh, speed running of Super Mario. Uh, <laughs> we're actually in the process of creating our own Mario level in this in the Mario, Mario Maker. Maker. Yeah, we're going to be creating our own uh, level, and if people beat it, then they're going to get a bar tab, <laughs> like a like a free bar tab. So. Uh, yeah, it's small things like that. We like to keep it interesting here. I'm sure it is. It's getting interesting. In fact, I just got a Nintendo Switch, and it's going to arrive maybe today or tomorrow. I won't be there, which is a weird thing for me, but it has the Mario Maker 2. Up, so. You want to pick it up on the road while you're on the road? Uh, I asked for it on some platform, and it just arrives right to my house. Amazon-like. <laughs> so <laughs> It was a Black Friday, Red Friday kind of deal or yeah. something like that, and yeah. I said, you know what? Take it. <laughs> Take my money. <laughs> Take all my money. Yeah, it's a problem. But, Should you know? have had it delivered here. 
because then they have to take it back to Madrid, and it, that is a problem for sure. Really? The bag's not so large. Uh, <laughs> I have to bring clothes. I'm not sure why. No, exactly. <laughs> I just get rid of a few pairs of underwear. And yeah. Just, you know, you have more it's underwear in. at home. Exactly. <laughs> There's always more exactly. underwear. <laughs> No, I, I think I needed to wear underwear, especially for the meetings with the universities. <laughs> I don't think they'd know that. <laughs> so they'll never realize, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that was pretty interesting. So those those events sound very interesting. And it looks, I don't know if you 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 are, have been into the gamification of things. I uh, have kind of. Uh, you probably had went into this event of this person who came here, who, whose name you will find out if you're yes. listening to this. You can go to the show notes and you will know if it was Melinda or somebody else here from the Dutch community. We've, I think we've had two or three guests from the Dutch community. So it might be a past guest. If not, it might be a future guest. Mm-hmm. So very, very interesting as well. But is there anything that you feel that you would like to, to use as far as gamification in the arcade hotel or, or that you feel that you're using? Consciously or unconsciously, is there there's something like that that you could think about uh, the the arcade hotel? Wow, um, not really, to be honest. Is in the end it, with with gamification, one of the things that you're you're trying to do is is reach some objective to say, well, what I want is for guests to I don't know stop maybe one or one guest every now and then takes a comic book, so you want to stop guests from who do that from doing, it. and you put that objective and you start designing around that with game elements or other things that could be, I'm just saying the first thing that yeah. comes to my mind, but I don't know if, it, if it's something that you've done, if something has come up like that, I don't know, or if something you would like to do in the future as well. I mean, at the end of the day, having a hotel is the idea is to make someone stay the most comfortable as possible, uh, without overdoing it. I am from North America. <clears throat> I've worked in the service industry since a very young age. And I believe that service is something you do, not something, well, it's something you are, not something you do. Uh, you either have it or you really don't. And at the end of the day, I want to make sure that, you know, people come and they have the best experience. Then they leave and then they review us, you know, five out of five, 10 out of 10, uh, all the time. And I work with my staff quite a bit to try and tackle those objectives. Like, those are my objectives, to have the five out of five or 10 out of 10 on every single review, whether it's through the check-in process or uh, just general inquiries by the guests about what to do in the city or the cleanliness of the rooms or, you know, there's certain things that we have control over and certain things that we don't have control over. And, I mean, everything is a small project here. Um, Day-to-day, everything is a little small goals here being in a hotel, you know, cleaning the room to the best of your ability. It's it's a small goal, but it's, it's, it's... and we have processes for it, and we work on those processes on a regular basis. Having guests kind of take two video games from the the retro game library and making sure that they bring it back. I mean, if you remember back in the day, if you didn't bring back your VHS to the, to the video uh, store, they would charge you extra if you didn't rewind them or something. The blockbuster of Yeah, exactly, sorts. but they had to make sure that you rewinded it, otherwise you got charged, an, I don't know, an extra two bucks or something. Uh, it's the same thing, kind of like finding ways that, you know, people don't leave the games in the consoles, which then are housekeepers. So it's small things like that. Yeah, it's, it's not so. No, there, there, are, or there are small behaviors there that you're yeah. trying to make sure both on the staff side and on the guest side that are, that are complied. Maybe maybe there could be interesting things for you to do in the we, future. We are but. working on getting more direct bookings. so That could be another objective for and sure. There, there's kind of, you know, we're putting together kind of some riddles now that would get you an extra discount if you come onto our website and start the booking process. And if you kind of figure out this little riddle, you'll get an extra, you know, either an extra welcome drink or a late check, or like another late check. An extra long day checkout. So we're going to add a little bit more gaming into that. There's always uh, interesting things to do. Like sometimes it's not even about perks. Like having things, that it's not stuff. It could be access to something. It could be things that don't, don't... I mean, because many times we think of rewards, it tends to be money or money related. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. oh, you don't have to pay for a drink in the bar. Or you don't have to pay for... A late checkout. Late, late checkout yeah, or yeah. those kinds of things. And that, that, that's perfect. That works very well as well but there's other things which sometimes could be even more powerful that are not necessarily things you give people so access is one of them and, and depending on what that access could mean it, it could be something interesting so, mm-hmm. or getting to pick which is the console you have in your room that doesn't cost anything yep. 
really. You, and, and of course, you have to limit it to the options. If it's a single room, you say, well, what do we have in single rooms? And you have to have an inventory of that. We, in single rooms, we have Nintendo, Atari, and PlayStation 1. Yep. So pick from the three. Yep. If it's a, you know, the, I don't, the Fantastic Four room, um, what do we have in Fantastic Four rooms? These three, four, five, six consoles that you can pick from that. So that could be something that doesn't really cost you anything. Mm -hmm. And it could be an, an access kind of thing. It's something we've been thinking about. I mean, it's something we've thought about since day one. The logistics of something like that. Oh, yeah. It's a great example. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You have a great example of it. But the logistics behind it is just... It's, it's not that it's simple. No, it's, it's a shit show. Um, but it's... it's yeah, we're 100% trying to think of ways for on the guest side, I mean, as well as... This, on the staff side, it's, it's also things like, um, you know, if you get mentioned by name in a review... You get a little, you get a little bonus as well. Okay. I mean, it's, it's so there's small things both on the on the staff side and on the guest side. Mostly on the guest side that we're trying to just make the whole process a lot more fun. Uh, from from pre-booking to the end of your stay. I mean, it's it's small things that we're trying to because games are fun. <laughs> gaming is, I'm mean, not just video gaming, but gaming in general is fun. Like life is yeah. a game, and it should be treated yeah. as such. So yeah, trying to find those things is it's. It's definitely something I'm working on. I have a colleague who's a lot more into it than I am. And, you know, he's always coming up with good ideas. So I think over the next year or two, you're going to see some more gamification happening in the hotel. Interesting. But when we sit down again, <laughs> when we sit down again, you might see a little bit more of that gamification coming. Interesting, interesting. I was, I was talking to one of your, somebody at the night shift last night, and I, I, I just realized, I was thinking about the whole situation, and it dropped on me. I said, well, if I was single and younger, and I was working his shift at night, and I could just play games. I'd probably end up single for the rest of my life, working the night shift at the arcade hotel. You just ha are there, and, and like, like just for you to picture, I don't, if you've not been here, literally the place where the staff member at night sits behind his back is the game room. And so, one of them is the retro game library, which... Exactly, yeah. exactly. So imagine you're there, it's, you know, 12 p.m., Nobody's really coming in or looking like maybe if somebody wants to come in and rings the bell, he, he's going to come in. Or are you going to listen to this person come in? Yeah. Other than that, this person has, you know, the, the, the game room behind him. And if nobody comes, he can just sit down and play for a while. So we have had problems with this in the past. <laughs> so it's, it's definitely it's definitely been an issue that our staff would end up playing rather than doing their job. So it's not just that our uh, our hosts or our receptionists have to just open the door and serve some food and check in and check out people. There's you know there's other tasks that need to be done throughout the day and the night. Okay. Uh, so back kind of at the beginning, those things didn't get done at all. Okay. Because they were gaming just pretty much mm. the whole shift until somebody came in. They do get to game a little bit if it's really, really, really quiet. But you know they're not allowed putting on headphones while they're gaming because you know you need to be you need to be aware of what's going on. Um, it is tempting for them. <laughs> it's very tempting for them. I, that, that's exactly what I meant. Like, it's, it's, how do you? Even if you want to, you know, like, oh no, I'm going to be a responsible citizen. <laughs> no, I'm like going to be. <laughs> uh, I mean, you you met it was Dean. I think you said you met. Was it Dean you met last um, night? I'm not sure if, if it was me, the Dean or, or Miguel. Uh, Miguel was, was working in the evening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Miguel Could was have been e e either of the two of them. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, some of the, most of our staff are gamers. Some of our uh, old school staff, some, some of our staff that's been here a lot longer, are not. So, you yeah, know, we have a balance. This used to be a, a I'm going to quote here, normal hotel. Yes. Just a normal hotel. Just a normal hotel. And some of the staffers are from that time as well. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're still around from back in the day, and they're not gamers. Um, actually, one of our one of one of my colleagues, Corolla, uh, she has you know a 15, 16 year old son who's obsessed with gaming. So I mean, <laughs> she knows about gaming through him, but she's never really picked up anything and, and played it. But yeah, some of our night shift, they're a bit younger. Uh, they're more yeah, they're, they're they're some of them are gamers. So it has been a problem. Just as long as they do their job. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. But don't start playing, you know, an online multiplayer where yeah. you're going to have to, you know, jump off and go AFK every once in a while just because somebody wants to check in or somebody's going to get a beer. So uh, it took us a while, but we found a balance with the staff for sure. Interesting. It took so, a while, though. 
Yeah, yeah, of course, because you have you do have that element of, which I guess is as you were saying, it's fine if you sit down and play, you know, Red Dead Redemption for a while, and you know you're playing and somebody comes up, you just click pause. Yeah. You get back to the desk and you know nothing happened. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and if there's nobody else in the game room anyway, you're not keeping somebody from playing. Exactly. Play. Exactly. So it's, but yeah, I mean they have to they definitely have to keep an eye on the door. Um, yeah, of course. It's just I mean you have to be careful as well. I mean it's three o'clock in the morning. Who knows what's What's, who's coming in and, and guests, they have their own key to get into the hotel just to make sure that nobody comes in behind them. And True. It's a security thing. I mean, yeah, you can easily just come into the game room and you don't see who's coming in the front door. So security is obviously paramount to everything. But yeah, sometimes <laughs> we, we do have like a lot of staff who come here when they're not working. Okay. And then they get to, you know, play as much as they want. It doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. Uh, so that's Which, a perk. Yeah, we encourage it as well. I mean, it's it's nice to have them around here and gaming as well. And they're yeah talking to the to the guests about it. The guests have clearly met them or, or for sure have met them when they were working their shit. So I I like to have that interact the social interaction like kind of less on the on the work side and more on the you know what are you playing? Oh, can I join you? Or can I challenge you to FIFA or NHL or I don't know? Should we play a Call of Duty together? And, yeah, so I really like that. So. The whole building the community is it because it, you started off with something like um, having new friends and having somebody new on your Facebook email or whatever. Yeah. So the whole community building is something that you're you're focused on. Yeah. As well. Yeah, it has. To, I think it, it has to be. I mean, I'm a social person or social person, and I believe that uh, yeah, and it, that all of my staff and everything about this place should emanate that as well. So that social aspect, I mean, gaming is just, like, it, like I said before, it's just one way to, to have it. But, you know, sitting at the bar, talking, you know, sometimes I work behind the bar, sometimes I check people, and then we start the conversation, did you see the last Avengers film, or <clears throat> what, what do you think was the best Spider-Man film, or, uh, and just getting that, you know, conversation started, and then it's like, oh, what game are you playing lately? Oh, I'm playing Days Gone, oh, I'm playing Days Gone as well, oh, where are you in the game? And it's like, oh, let's put it in, and... You, you know, you show me how you beat this horde, and I'll show you how I beat that horde. You know, it's so it's it's definitely it's it's the intro to a nice conversation, I think. Nice. So, Dan, thank you very much for your time. I don't know if there's anything else that you would like to 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 tell our audience in general. People here tend to be interested in gamification. Right. If you're interested in gamification, you're probably interested as well in games. It's not a requirement. Right. So we do recommend people if you want to get into the, into gamification, you should play some games. To yeah. understand what's going on behind yes. the game, so you can get examples, ideas, inspiration, and so on. So, I don't know if there's any any message you wanna you wanna send out, other than of course staying at the arcade hotel, which I've said probably <laughs> intuitively, directly or indirectly. Sure, sure. <laughs> is is there is there anything? Well, I mean, definitely, I want to get our, our message across, which is it's uh, be excellent to each other. I mean, that's first and foremost. That's like the motto of the hotel. That's right? that's that's definitely the slogan of the hotel. Obviously, we we copped it from somebody else uh, <laughs> who I'm not going to mention in case there's some sort of, you know, listening and then it pops up and then trademark. Um, <laughs> and now they're working on the third film, which we're very happy about. No, but in, in general, obviously, be, be, be excellent to each other. I mean, online, offline, uh, that's first and foremost. And second of all, uh, yeah, if you're going to come here, book direct on the website. <laughs> but you're going to see, you're, you're first of all going to get the best price and then you're going to have these perks of booking through the website directly. And yeah, I mean, if you're in the hotel, feel free to ask for Dan and have a drink and let's chat and say hi. I have no problem standing up from my desk and coming to have a drink with somebody because it's a nice, beautiful break for my day. That's something I miss, uh, checking people in, you know, from, from my hotel experience. It's checking people. I really enjoy that. Um, so if I'm around, you can feel free to say, oh, can Dan check me in? And then I'll spend an hour <laughs> with you showing you the city. And, I mean, it's it's... No, besides that, I mean, I yeah, I'm really happy that you came by, and uh, if you want to come by, if you have ideas for events, whether you're local or coming in internationally, uh, just get in touch. Let us know what you're thinking. Uh, if you ever want a special request, I don't know, a bottle of wine in your room, that's always possible. A bottle of whiskey in your room, also <laughs> possible. What do you do with that? It's up to you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> just don't throw up anywhere in our rooms, and I'm happy. Where can we find the Arcade Hotel or Dan in, you know, the Twitterverse or Instagram yeah. or whatever you want to lead uh, us to? You can definitely find us on uh, on Facebook, obviously, as the Arcade Hotel. Same with Instagram, hashtag the Arcade Hotel. Our website is uh, www.arcadehotel.nl for Netherlands. 
myself, I'm online as Daniel Bryan Salmanovich, so you'll always find me on Facebook. I'm not on Instagram personally. I find I just spend sometimes too much time online, so I'm not on Instagram just to, to limit myself. <laughs> Yeah, we also have our gamer tags as the Arcade Hotel as well, whether it's um, PlayStation or, or Xbox. Yeah, and or I'm sitting here in the hotel, and feel free to come by and ask for me and find me, and uh, let's have a chat. Thanks a lot, Dan. It's, it's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure staying at the hotel. I, I, I'm really enjoying my experience once again. Thanks for, for taking the time to talk to the, to the engagers. I hope you also enjoyed this interview. I hope the engagers enjoy listening to your experience, what the Arcade Hotel looks like. Hope you get some inspiration as well for some other things that you might do. Probably you don't, don't want to just do another Arcade Hotel, but you might get some inspiration from, from what Dan is, is doing and maybe into other worlds as well. There's many things. There's In Madrid, I've seen uh, there probably are other ruins like that. There's uh, game bars or board game bars yeah, and yeah. video e game e bars. Sports bars now as well. Yeah, that, I haven't seen those. So instead yeah. of just having sports on the TVs, it's now eSports all over the TVs, which I find very interesting. So there's many things that still, I'm sure, can be done, and I hope you do find the inspiration for that. But now, for now, for today, and for this week, it's time to say that it's game over. Hey, Engagers. Thank you for listening to Professor Game Podcast, and I hope you enjoyed the special chat with Daniel Solmanovich of the Arcade Hotel. And if you'd like to more interviews like this one, just please let me know. The, the best way to let me know is by subscribing through professorgame.com slash subscribe and get started into our email list. There, you can reply to that initial email. You'll be in contact with me constantly. And, you know, you'll be the first to know of any opportunities that Professor Game might have for you. And before you go, you move on to your next topic, your next subject or your next mission. Would you like to know how Clark Aldrich is creating short simulations? Then subscribe using your favorite podcast app and listen to the next episode of Professor Game. See you there.